Hi there, and a very warm welcome to this week's, and I dare to say, quickish tip. So this week and next week in a two-part series, we are going to take a look at network rendering. And I don't mean cloud rendering, I mean computer-to-computer -computer hardwired connection. So this week we are going to take a look at Otoy's implementation of network rendering, and I'm going to explain the setup inside of Cinema 4D and Octane. And next week, we are going to take a look at Cinema 4D's team render setup. What I'm not going to do is talk about the general implementation of networks in your office. This you have to figure out on your own. So for this, let's get some coffee ready because the topic might be a bit dry and let's get going. All right, let's make this as entertaining as possible or at least as information driven as possible. In this scene, we have a moving camera we have a small animation, so we have something to render on our render farm. For that, we are going to use two methods to set up a network rendering system. One being the Octane Network Renderer. This is also working throughout and in Cinema 4D. And then we are going to use Cinema 4D's own team render service that we are using with the team render server and team render client. This is provided within your installation of Cinema 4D. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started with the first method, which is the Octane Network Renderer. Good news, everyone. And this is that you already partially installed your network rendering services of Octane with the Octane for Cinema 4D installation. So if you go to your Octane render settings and scroll down here is the network rendering rollout. So you can just enable it and let's see if there are any machines. And no, obviously not. This is because we also need to install the Octane render client to our machines that are in the network. So let's go and take a look how to do this next. Surprise chart time. So this is for the people who don't know what I'm talking about. For those who do, you can already skip to the next chapter. If you're not, the concept is very easy to grasp. So what you have here is your main workstation. So the computer you have Cinema 4D and Octane installed, but maybe you also have a second workstation in your office that has capable hardware. And maybe you want to connect this workstation to help rendering. And you can do so by establishing a network connection between those two so they can communicate with each other. Now, for network rendering, it is really recommended to have a hardwired connection and don't let those computers run over Wi-Fi because a wired connection is more stable and usually faster. Let's establish a little bit of terminology. So we are going to name your main machine server and the render helper node. And of course, you are not limited to one node. You can actually use as many nodes as you want you just connect it to the network via a switch. In order to give the server or Cinema 4D and Octane access to the hardware of those nodes, we need to run a program here so they can communicate and this program has access to the hardware. And this is what we are going to do next. We are going to install Octane's render node on one of the nodes here. So you can see how it's done. Before we install the software to one of our nodes, we actually need to download it first. But before we download, let's speak about the license. So let's go to shop and find the entry for network rendering. And you can see there's actually unlimited network rendering, which lets you use as many computers as you would like, which is a good thing. So let's carry on to the download. There are multiple ways to download this, but the most easy one is going through the My Account and go to Downloads. And then since it's not a DCC, but a direct application, let's go to Applications, scroll down and find the network rendering node. Since we are using Windows on all of our nodes, let's go and accept and download this version. All right then, so for every render node, what you need to do is install the downloaded exit file here. And what I usually do is shorten this path here a little. So I just want to have that called Octane Node 2023.1. You can also go with the full name if you don't mind that. Oh, have I mentioned that the whole network rendering thing can be a little bit daunting and technical? 
Well, I'm doing it now. But to focus on the positives, there's only one more step you need to do to get this whole thing running. To do so, you need to navigate to the installation folder we just installed the Octane node in, and then double click on the install daemon. This will install a script that will run every time you start up the computer, so your Octane is ready to go. Now, usually the default values here are OK, so what you can do is just hit enter a couple of times until you are through the whole setup process. So let's do this. I'm OK with the port. I'm OK to use all GPUs. You can also use only one or two or a couple of them. Actually, I want to enable the out of core, so I hit yes. And since I have 128 gigabytes of RAM installed, I'm just using 96 here. Here we go. And is all of this correct? Yes, it is. And we are basically done with the setup. What this installation process is doing, installing a script in your startup, and this makes the script run every time your computer starts. If you don't want that, you can just drag it out of this folder, for example, on the desktop. All right, let's finally run this thing by double clicking and you can see something flashing here. And this is basically the command prompt starting minimized. So if we maximize it, you can see this is the render node running. So it should be picked up by Cinema 3D on the other machine. If you are a little bit like me and want to work in a tight and clean work environment, I find those buttons a little bit ugly, to be honest. I made my own shortcut here to the render node. And you can find out how I did that in the later portion of this video. So let's keep watching. Finally back at home in Cinema 4D. So let's see if we have any results from what we did just now. So let's go to the render settings here and to the network preferences. And yes, you can see that there are two nodes available, one with four GPUs and one with one GPU. So what we can do is tick those on here or just bind all. And this will bind every one of those nodes that are available in the network. So let's go close and let's render in the live viewer here. And where can I see that all my nodes are working? Basically, when you toggle the info, you might want to look at the lower portion here and there's no sign of nodes. And this is rightly so, because you need to turn them on for the live viewer as well if you want to use them there. So let's go to Options, Network Rendering and enable them here. As soon as we've done that, let's re-render. There is another line popping up that reads slaves. So the old term for render nodes. And you can see those are two right now. And these are those two that we implemented before. What's really important with different rendering approaches is to understand what the advantages and disadvantages of those are. So let's jump into chart time once more and get a closer look what Octane's network rendering is doing in the background. So let's have a look what's happening behind the scenes if we hit the network with a workload. And the workload is consistent of frames. So this is a small animation of six frames basically. And what the Octane server is doing is splitting up the first frame into chunks, which then is distributed to the network render nodes. And because one frame is split up into chunks that then can be computed by multiple machines is also the reason why we can have those machines also available in our live viewer. Since we are live updating our render, this means that we have very closely communicate everything with our nodes. That means some of the samples are rendered on every node, then are sent back to be displayed on the server. And then the server communicates with the node what to render next. Let's actually expand our network by two more nodes. So we have five computers overall. And what this means is that our workload has to be diced into smaller sections, of course, that then are also fed to every one of those nodes. That also means that the server needs to get data from more nodes, so the traffic over the switch to the server is a lot higher. The simple truth here is that the more nodes you have on your network, the higher the capacity is between the switch and the server, and also the compute of the server because it has to communicate with every one of its nodes. 
While there are workarounds for that, for example, upgrading your connection from a 1 gigabit to a 10 gigabit connection, there will be eventually always a bottleneck with this method. So while it's great for single frame rendering, as you are in print for example doing, where the emphasis is on one frame and you need all the power of the network on that, or you have your live viewer and want to get faster rendering there, when you render animations, the emphasis is on getting the whole animation rendered through, and this is not the best system for doing that. So, small spoiler for next week, we are going to look at Cinema 3D's Team Render, where the frames are actually distributed themselves and then rendered on their nodes, which reduces the traffic by a whole lot. So, let's keep an eye out for this video next week. Welcome back to Cinema 3D, everyone. So, this should be a short one, as I just quickly want to go over what to remember when network rendering. And this is just a two step process. Basically, the awesome thing is that everything works in Cinema 4D, so you can set up your scenes the way you are used to, and then just make sure that the network rendering is enabled, your both nodes are showing up, or as many as you have, and then you basically are good to go. No worries about plugins as Xparticles or Turbulence FD, as they are translated into Octane so basically what you can see in the viewport is also supported by the network rendering. So all in all, you can just turn it on, then hit render and hit OK, and then sit back, drink a coffee and wait for the render to finish. And by the way, you also see the render nodes and their capacity here. So right now I'm using five external GPUs to render. Welcome to chart time again. This is the last chart time of today, so let's look at the pros and cons of the Octane Network Renderer. After that, I will show you how to make the sparkly link to open up your network renderer in style. So let's get going. Obviously, if you can read, you already have all the informations, but let's go through the bullet points one by one. So included in Octane Render Studio Plus, which is the only subscription going forward, so the chances are very high that if you have Octane, you already own the network renderer and unlimited amounts of it. So no extra licenses needed, which is very nice. I find it rather easy to install, especially compared to renderers like Deadline or even the Cinema 4D Team Render. So let's see what you think next week. Then no plugins necessary. Everything is translated to Octane. If it works within the live viewer, it also works within the network renderer. Then the next point can be an advantage and a disadvantage. And this is that all machines render on one frame. As we talked about this before, it's an advantage if you render on print renderings where you need the power all on one frame or you need the power in your live viewer. But it also can be a disadvantage if you want to render an animation and want single machines on single frames. As I said before, don't use too many nodes in your network, otherwise it gets bottlenecked. So from experience, I would say three nodes and one server is good. If you add four or five nodes, then it gets instable and slow. Also, you don't get the power of those added nodes, so you're paying for graphic cards that then you can't use the power of. Small side tip, if you have capacity within your nodes, cram as many graphic cards as possible in there, so you have fewer nodes with more graphic cards, this way you can also harness more power. So more nodes also mean more talking on the network, therefore there are communication errors and sometimes a node freezes, and in some cases that can take down the whole node array on the network. So I had instances where I gone home and in the next morning, instead of a finished render, I found a frozen Cinema 4D. Also, this can be minimized by using less nodes because then there is less network usage and less errors that emerge from that. And because of that, I wrote down the supervision comment here because this is like a dog. If you look away, it knows that you look away and it will do something stupid. So you have to put it on constant supervision. And if you keep that in mind, then you have a pretty robust system that you can use and utilize. Now on to the sparkly bit. Alrighty, sparkly time now. So what we have here is some icons that we need to make our sparkly link. 
and those can be downloaded from my Google Drive down in the description below. Then we have a folder where we installed our Octane node, and then we need the startup file if you haven't dragged the batch file to the desktop yet. So let's open an explorer, and what I missed to tell you is if you just type in startup, then you end up with the startup folder. So it's as easy as that. As I said before, when you want to run this whenever you start your computer, you can leave this in there. For our purpose, we can drag this out right now, close the folder here, and look at the contents. So this is the script that runs the Octane node. So let's go to show more options and then edit, and this opens the script in a text editor. What we need to do next is actually create a link from our Octane node executable. So let's click it, hit Alt and drag it out to the desktop, and this will create a link. Let's call it Octane 2023.1. Here we go. Let's also open its preferences by right clicking and go to properties, sorry, the properties I mean. And what we need to do now is rather simple. So we just copy this text here with the quotation marks inside of the target. Here we go. And then click apply. And now we've lost our icon, but this is not as bad since we can get a new one. So let's go here, change icon. Yes, I'm aware of that. Then just click here and copy this link browse. And let's just copy it in here. And then we just go for the sparkly one. OK, OK. And so we have a nice link that will open up our node when we want to. Now, the really cool thing is you can have different settings. So, for example, different RAM usage, different graphic cards that are allocated, and you can make different links from that. And therefore, you can start exactly the version you want. Isn't that nice? All right, I think this is all said and done. So this concludes this week's video. Don't forget, I have a whole YouTube channel dedicated to this. So there's a ton of videos out there. So maybe if you're interested in this video, you also might want to check the Studio Office Peak. There's a lot of computers in there. If you want to support me and the sharing of free knowledge, of course, you can do that by becoming a Patreon. The link is down in the description below. Which brings me to my next point, thanking those who already contributed, such as my 50 euro tier subscribers, Shields Augustinen and Leon Studio TV. Thank you so very much. I know I say this every time, but I really mean it. Also, a huge thanks for my 15 euro tier subscribers, AB Studio, Alexander Stevanovic, Alessio De Vecchi, Alex Wilson, Bavana, BVR, Christian Grajewski, Computer Generated, Etienne Schmidt, George Luna, Harish Pavaskar, Jakob Fung, Joy Schicoline, Just a Freaking, Chris Clemson, Ludger, Part 1 of 2, Quark and Dang, Raiko, Reshock, Rory H, Shamos Johnson, Terry Wayne Renson, Yasin Rupp, and Shibuur Shang. If you're still watching, again, as always, thank you so very much. Let's post something in the comments. This time a couple of PC emoticons to symbolize a network. Again, thank you everyone for your support. And with that, I wish you an amazing week, a good time and happy networking. Bye.